Okay, so we're going to um, learn how to do a match paired sample t test um, in SPSS, uh, sometimes called a repeated measures t test, a pre post test t test. Um, but it is match paired, the official name is a match paired sample t test. Uh, so usually it's, uh, it's, it's used um, when we're trying to, to look at uh, the differences between means of a matched sample. Um, a matched sample is, is basically, or, or are basically two groups that are closely related to one another, like husband and wife, or twins, um, or if they're matched on some type of an element that the researcher, some type of a condition that the researcher is um, is trying to look at. In other words, both groups, both samples are very closely related or matched in some way. In education, for the most part, um, this test is usually used in a pre-post situation where we pre-test a group, we then um, initiate some type of a treatment, and after a period of time, we post-test the group. Um, and then we take a look at the pre-test mean score and the post-test mean score and we make a determination if the difference between those scores is significant. If the difference is significant, and of course the research design is valid, we could then make uh, the conclusion that the treatment is what significantly influenced the scores uh, to increase or to, de to decrease whatever it is that we're looking for. Anyway, to run our test, what we want to do is Again, we want to select our data. Make sure your SPSS data file is on the desktop, and then you can just click on that, and um, and it will open up. It will open up our data. Uh, again, what you're looking here is the uh, data view for this data file. Uh, if we go to variable view, you can see this is a fairly large data file and has quite a bit, uh, uh, quite a bit of data in it and variables. We're going to look at the uh, uh, the math achievement test um, here. And a pre-math achievement and a post-math achievement test uh, is what we're predominantly going to look at here and run a, 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 an, an SPSS match paired sample t-test on it. Uh, so if we were to research or maybe we would think that uh, let's say I'm a math teacher um, and I think uh, a certain uh, a certain type of math program is going to improve students. Unfortunately I don't have the advantage of having two separate groups that are equal that I could give one group the treatment to and one group remains in the control so I have to use one classroom. So what I would do is, is I would pre-measure uh, or pre-test these kids um, on math skills or math abilities. So I have a baseline score. That would be the pre-test or the pre-math test. And then I would implement the treatment, uh, usually minimum of six weeks, say eight weeks. And at the end of the treatment, I would post-test uh, those students. I would then take a look at their mean, the mean on the pre-test, and the mean on the post-test and see if the difference between the two is significant. If it is, I could attribute that to the treatment. So we're going to do uh, our t-test and again we do most of our statistical functions in SPSS under the analyze button. So I click on analyze, I go down and I select compare means and another little pop-up comes up and I want to select paired samples t-test. When I click on that, another pop-up window comes up. Looks a little different than what we've been looking at. You'll see it says paired variables, variable one, variable two. On the left-hand side are all the variables in our SPSS uh, data, data file. So if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, I'm going to see that here are my two uh, test data that I want to, uh, I want to check. So Typically, not always, but typically what we'll do is, is we'll use the post score, in this case post math, and we'll put that into the paired variables box first, so it becomes variable one. And then the pre-math score, or the pre-test, 
will place into the variables box as variable two. Now, the only reason I'm doing this here is because SPSS will actually take the post math and the pre math and it will subtract the pre math mean score from the post math mean score. So this way I wind up with positive values. You're going to get the same results if I had switched it and put pre-math into variable 1 and post-math into variable 2. The only difference is going to be is that you're going to get a negative statistic. So, so long as you know what you're doing, what you're placing where, and then how that is interpreted to the original problem, it really doesn't matter where you put these. Uh, I'm putting them in this place here because I'm looking at post-math into pre-math. Uh, under the assumption, let's say, that the researcher wants to see if the treatment increases students' math uh, achievement. Okay, so if they're increasing, that would be a one-tailed test, upper tail critical, we would be looking for a positive T value. So I'd want to put the post-math score in first, followed by the pre-math, because pre-math will then be subtracted from post-math, and hopefully I get a positive, um, a positive T statistic. Um, if not, then I know that I'm, def that I'm definitely going to be rejecting the null hypothesis. Anyway, once I've entered the, va the, the variables, it's really easy. All I have to do is click OK. Once I click OK, I get uh, my output in SPSS. The first table is going to show me the paired sample statistic. It's going to show me the descriptive statistics. So the post-math mean score was 12.68 for 75 students, and the pre-math mean score was 11.98. Uh, remember, this is the same group of students tested twice. Okay, so pre-math, they scored 11.98 mean, and then after the treatment was implemented, they scored a 12.68 mean. Standard deviation for both is fairly similar, so the variability in the groups, uh, the variability from one test to the next test is pretty good, which is usually going to happen in, in a in a match paired sample t-test pre-post test because you're dealing with the same same group of students just being tested twice so usually variability is going to be pretty similar the next uh, table that you'll see the t-test is a surprisingly is a correlation table and that's exactly what this is is a pearson r correlation table okay it does a correlation between the pre-math and the post-math uh, performance and basically what this is saying is is that there's a strong relationship with how students performed in the pre-math and how students performed on the post-math there's a very strong relationship and it's significant and what it's basically telling us is is that the higher they scored on the pre-math the higher they scored on the post-math which we're usually looking for think if it was a negative correlation it would mean that the higher they score in the pre-math the lower they scored in the post-math and it would tell us that maybe the treatment we have is really not that effective and might have a problem. Um, again, it's all interpreted to the problem that we're looking at. Uh, the last table here is our paired samples t-test or our match paired samples t-test. And it looks a little bit different than the independent samples t-test uh, in that uh, there is no Levine's test uh, for equality of variance here. Um, and again, it's because we're using the same group of students. Um, so what you find in the first cell is it says mean. What it really is is the mean difference between the post-test and the, and the, the pre-test, or the post-math score and the pre-math score. If you took both these means and subtracted them, you'd get this, the mean here. The standard deviation is 2.32. Again, standard error of the mean. Our 95% confidence interval is actually right in the middle of our table. Our T statistic is here, 2.608. Our degrees of freedom is 74. Remember, degrees of freedom is N minus 1. Since sample was 75, our degrees of freedom is 74. And our significance value is the difference, is this mean difference, 0.69 from pre-math to post-math, significantly different. And we see in our significance two-tailed here that, yes, it is significantly different. We get a p-value of 0.011. Remember, anything equal to or less than 0.05 is going to be significant. So we get a p-value of 0.01, and it's a significant mean difference from pre-math to post-math. So 
Whatever the treatment was that the teacher used, apparently it works. Our 95% confidence interval is referencing the mean difference. The, I'm 95% confident that the actual mean difference from pre to post math test, the actual mean difference would be somewhere between 0.16 and 0.12 uh, for the underlying population that this sample represents.